Here's another lesson on a type of third declension noun uh, and how to decline those nouns whose stems are in iota or upsilon. Now the reason these are, are special uh, nouns is that as you'll see there is a shift in the stem so where it looks like an iota or upsilon in the nominative it's actually going to in most cases shift to an epsilon. Uh, you'll be able to note that uh, when you look at the, the genitive singular. So, as always, singular. So, let's take a look. Uh, first, we'll look at uh, nouns that end in, have a stem in iota, like polis, city. So, polis, poleos. Recently, uh, you're going to notice a few weird things here. First of all, that the stem has shifted to an epsilon. And secondly, that the genitive singular is os and not your expected os not your omicron but omega. Uh, what has happened here, uh, this is a little linguistic thing, in that this stem actually used to be an eta and there was an eta omicron sigma and that's why this accent can be on the omicron there but through what's called quantitative metathesis metathesis, there's been a, a shifting so a shift in the length of the vowel. So we've shifted from long, short, to short, long. Right? Once you know that, uh, you simply move on. Uh, know that this is definitely a third declension. So poleos, pole, right? so our stem here with our iota. Now these have actually contracted to be a single uh, syllable. Tan polin, right? so a new, uh, instead of our alpha, and this is okay, you, you, you're used to that. And our vocative is the stem poly. Right, so this is one of these situations where the stem is the vocative. And now if we move to our plural, poles, we've got a contraction here. We've got our stem eh with eh. These contract to poles. Poleon, right, accent by analogy with the genitive singular. Polesi nothing unusual here. Poles, again a contraction of eh, as, being ace. And we've seen that already. And then the vocative being the same as the nominative. All right, so polis, poleos, pole, polin. Poles, poleon, polesi, poles. So a few th uh, strange things going on there. Uh, this quantitative metathesis giving you the os, a little contraction, the new in the accusative, contraction in the nominative and accusative plural, and otherwise normal. Alright, so those are for nouns that whose stem is in I. So if you see this is, eos, it's going to follow this pattern. And then we have stems that end in U, but shift to an epsilon. Upsilon to epsilon. So, uh, hopecus, uh, forearm, and you're going to see other nouns like this, like presbus, old man, elder, presbus or pelicus, axe. But again, you're going to notice them because the genitive is eos. So again, quantitative metath metathesis gives us this uh, os instead of os. And then we move on just like we did with polis. So pekeos, peke, pekun. Alright, so our new in the accusative. Pekun, uh, peku in the vocative, so it's the stem. Pekes, contraction of eez. Pekeon, pekesi, pekes, contraction of eos, and pekes. So watch that uh, genitive singular for a clue as to what's going to go on. And then we have neuters, which are going to follow rules as you might expect. To astu, this is again another word for city, astu, asteos, right, our quantitative metathesis, aste, astu, nominative and accusative are always the same. Astu, for the vocative. To aste, it's a contraction of astea, uh, which you will actually see in Homer. See the uncontracted form. 
asteon, astesi, aste, aste. All right, so here in the neuters, we've only got really one contraction to worry about. And then there are going to be a number of stems that are in upsilon, but there is no shift. There's no shift to epsilon. And again, you'll note this by noting the genitive. And this will decline just as you might expect, except for the accusative singular. So, ho uh, this is mouse. See other words like ichthus, fish, doing the same thing. Moose, muos, mui, moon. Okay, watch that. So, uh, the thing to keep in mind is that stems in upsilon and iota have an accusative singular in nu. Plural, uh, and then the vocative is just the stem, mu. Hoi muez, no contraction. Ton muon, tois musi, tus mus, or muas. So here you do have a bit of contraction, but you'll also find this uncontracted form, muas. Uh, and then o muez, the vocative the same as the nominative. So things to watch out for. Note that genitive singular. It will tell you whether or not the shift, uh, the stem has shifted to an epsilon, and if it does, you'll note it by seeing the eos stem. And if it does, uh, then note the contractions that are going to happen in your nominative and accusative plural. All of these nouns in stems in epsilon and upsilon are going to have an accusative singular in nu, and they're going to have a vocative singular, which is just the stem. If you remember those things, you shouldn't have much of a problem.